I'm here with Alexander Merkurs, editor-in-chief of the Duran. Alexander, we have more news about Julian Assange. Uh, it looks like Sweden is opening the case against him once again, the, uh, the rape allegations. And they are asking now the UK to extradite Assange to Sweden so that he can face those allegations there. Um, there's different viewpoints on this. Um, You'll have a viewpoint of, say, Galloway, who finds this as, you know, um, inexcusable for Sweden to be doing this. And then there's, you know, the viewpoints of, of someone like Craig Murray, who actually looks at this as a good thing. He sees it as a way for Assange to kind of close the book on this case, on this Swedish case, once and for all. Uh, where do you lie on this? On balance, I go with Craig Murray. Now, I, I need to make one important qualification. The Swedes have still not brought charges. I mean, they said that they're reopening the case, but we don't really know what that means. Um, they've had all the evidence to make a decision whether to bring charges or not for, I think, about two years now. I mean, because Assange answered all their questions when he met with the Swedish investigators in 2017 in the Ecuadorian embassy. And they didn't bring charges then. They, they'd actually closed the case, which is the second time they've closed the case. They've come under very heavy political pressure from the British, who I think see the Assange case as something of a hot potato, to reopen the case, I suspect, in order to get the thing transferred to Sweden and out of Britain. But um, they haven't yet charged Assange, and it's not yet certain that they will. And the case doesn't look to me especially strong. And over and above and beyond all of that, I don't really, uh, I don't know whether they will actually ask for him to be extradited to Sweden because they haven't actually, so far as I'm aware, made a formal request that he be trans uh, uh, extradited to Sweden. I don't see he, how he can be until he is formally charged because the previous extradition proceedings were for him to attend and answer to interview which, um, of course, he's now done. He did that in the Ecuadorian embassy. So the extradition request would have to start, presumably, all over again. So it, if he does get extradited to Sweden, does that take precedence over the U.S. wanting him to get to the U.S.? If, well, if Sweden I, does make that formal uh, request for extradition? I, I would have thought so. Now, uh, it's a very, very um, tough uh, legal system in Sweden for people who are prosecuted um, on rape allegations. I mean, I, I understand that a lot of the evidence is kept secret and um, the um, the uh, constitution of the court is one which I would be somewhat worried about if I were up against a court like that. But having said that, I think on balance, it, it serves Assange's interests to go to Sweden because this thing has been, um, you know, there, this has been a shadow over him for all this time. And it's better to get these Swedish charges one way or the other, finally and conclusively out of the way. The danger is, if Assange goes to Sweden, if he's tried in Sweden, which I think it would take precedence over the American case, if he's then acquitted would he be immediately rearrested under the US extradition warrant and sent to Sweden, sent by Sweden to the US? I think the answer is he might be, because as I understand it, um, though the law, the extradition law between Sweden and the US is very similar to the one between Britain and the US, Swedish practice is to uh, agree to US extradition requests more readily than British practices. So, um, you know, I, I, I can understand Craig Murray's argument. I basically agree with it, but there are dangers for Assange if he is sent to Sweden. But if, if he does get sent to Sweden, he first has to serve out his term in the UK, correct? The 50 week oh, absolutely. term for, for missing the, his bail. 
I think that's right. I think he would. So, as I said, I mean, you know, we're going to have a situation. I mean, it's, I mean, let's be quite blunt about this. The persecution of this man is absolutely fearful. And he is already very ill. And he's been held in Belmarsh Prison. And he's going to be kept there for 50 weeks, or at least 25 weeks, according to the judgment that was made a short time ago. Then he has to go through the whole business of an extradition request on Sweden, if that ever actually materializes he then has to be taken to sweden there'd have to be a trial as i said in this very complicated legal process and then as i said he runs the risk of being extradited to the us always with the danger of prison sentences hanging over him i mean it, it seems to me that this is beyond cruel and i understand that the relevant un body has now actually criticized the severity of the sentence that was handed down by the British court in the bail skipping case, I mean, the 50 week sentence, they said that was wildly disproportionate. And I agree. But it seems that there is no uh, stopping the determination of these three governments, the US, Britain and Sweden, to, to, to break this man. Yeah, I mean, the, the initial thing that set everything off and the reason he went to the Ecuador embassy was because he was afraid that if he went to Sweden and he faced this type of kangaroo court there, he would be extradited to the U.S. I mean, that was that was the where, where this whole thing started, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, he, what he said was that he would certainly have gone to Sweden if the Swedes were prepared to guarantee that he would not be extradited to the U.S. The Swedes refused to give that commitment. So instead, he went to the Ecuadorian embassy when it became clear that the British were going to extradite him to Sweden. Now he's been, he was kept for seven years in the ex Ecuadorian em embassy in increasingly difficult and unhealthy conditions, causing his health to break down. He's now in Belmarsh prison. And as I said, he's now facing being dragged off to Sweden again. I mean, um, as I said, to me, this is, this is beyond cruel. That is how I would describe it. The, the whole Sweden thing has always perplexed me in a way because Sweden always kind of prides itself in being this liberal democracy that puts human rights above all else. Yeah. You know, it's, it's what everyone always talks about, the equality of Sweden, the liberalism of Sweden, the human rights of Sweden. You know, it's mm -hmm. the only thing you hear about Sweden. And then here you have the one case, you know, with Assange, and it looks like Sweden is a totalitarian, you know, autocratic mm. s state that is looking to to punish this man severely for having done the job of journalism and telling the truth. And that Sweden is so much under the thumb mm. of the deep state and the intelligence agencies in the U.S. is The whole thing just seems so perplexing. You would think that if there was one country where Assange would actually be afforded human rights, it would be the, the liberal wonderland and utopia of Sweden. Yes, well, you see, I think a lot of people have long had a very profound misconception about Sweden. I don't think Sweden has ever been this liberal wonderland or rather the social democratic wonderland that people are, are, are talking about. Yes, it is true that for many decades, the Swedish Social Democratic Party was the dominant party in Sweden. And if you go back long enough in time to the time of Prime Minister Erlander in the 50s and early 60s, and then to Olaf Palme, well, maybe in those days, Sweden was a pretty left-wing place, and Olaf Palmer was famously critical of aspects of US foreign policy. But those days are long gone, and we should have no illusions about Sweden anymore. And of course, Sweden has always been uh, a, I mean, it's neutral, nominally neutral, but it's always been very, very closely aligned with the US. It's always been very hostile to Russia. It's well known to those who have studied the history that during the, the Second World War in the German Soviet War of the, the, the Nazi Soviet War of the, of, the, of the Second World War, Sweden tended, if anything, to tilt slightly towards Nazi Germany as opposed to the Soviet Union. So, as I said, it, it's never been quite this democratic, 
freedom loving human rights loving place that people believe it to be so uh what is the legal team of assange uh looking at now and what is assange looking at now i mean what's, what's well, the situation i think they're just kind of at a standstill waiting to see what develops here well i think the first thing they've got to do is to concentrate with the existing case the existing case at the moment is the extradition request from the united states we don't yet know whether there's going to be a Swedish extradition case or whether there's going to be charges brought by Sweden against Assange. As I said, the case to me doesn't look terribly strong. And it may be that the Swedes have only consented to reopen this case in order to close it again. As I said, they had the opportunity to bring charges after Assange uh, um, was interviewed by them in the Ecuadorian embassy, and they didn't do so. Having said that, if the Swedes do bring charges, and if uh, um, the uh, um, they do seek his extradition to Sweden, uh, my own personal view and my strong opinion is that um, Assange should probably just agree to that, go to Sweden, face the charges there, respond to the charges. I, as I, said, I don't think they're particularly strong. At least that will clear his name of those charges. And then he can deal, whether in Sweden or increasingly in the United States itself, with uh, uh, um, the, major, the major legal challenge, which is, his, which is the one he's going to face there. I, I'm going to say straight away that one reason why I think uh, uh, Craig Murray is right and George Galloway is wrong about this one is that I think George Galloway um, has this, I think, uh, touching faith that the British legal system will uh, protect Assange from extradition to the United States and that he will win the extradition battle in Britain against the uh, US extradition request. I'm sorry to, to say, I don't have that confidence at all. I think it's very likely that one way or the other, uh, uh, um, Julian Assange is going to find his way before that court in Virginia. Yeah, the US is not going to let go of this. I don't exactly. Think so either. Exactly. It's not because the judges in Britain are not impartial and humane people. Many of them are. But as I said, we have to be realistic about the enormous political pressure that the U.S. can bring in cases of this kind. All right. Alexander McCurris, editor-in-chief of The Durant. Thank you very much, guys. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on the notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. And remember to visit the Duran shop, pick up a t-shirt, help support the Duran. Donate to us on PayPal and Patreon as well. The description links the links are in the description box down below. And you can follow us on iTunes and on SoundCloud for an audio copy of this video as well. And don't forget, you can follow us on Instagram, the Duran underscore com. And make sure to subscribe to our channel on Blank Chat. The links for that app are also in the description box as well. And you can also go to the Duran.com, our website, and see all the articles that we are linking up to every day. Alexander McCurse, editor-in-chief of the Duran. Thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.